Are you excited about Microsoft Power BI and Copilot? Huh? Are you? Are you excited as I am? Oh, ho, ho, ho. well, I got it. We got it working. We can't wait to get into it. We're going to go deep into Power BI and Microsoft Copilot. First look. It's going to be incredible. Okay, so Power BI Copilot allows you to like automatically build out a Power BI report using Copilot. It's it's an incredible new feature. Um, it does require you to either have a premium capacity, a P1 or higher, or an F64 or higher capacity, okay? So just for awareness sake, that's something you need to have. All right, let's head over to my desktop and let's look. All right, here I'm in Power BI. Some things you have to do. Now, this is rolling out gradually. It's not going to be out for everyone all over the place. So, uh, like, I know some people in Australia. I think you might be later in the cycle than people in North America. So, to do this, you have to go into the admin portal, and you need to uh, find the co-pilot features. Now, you can filter here, but there's two of them. So, if I do co-p... I'm missing one, so that's not it. So we do open AI, open, there we go. Open AI, uh, we'll, we'll find, uh, these are the two items. Both of these have to be enabled for this to work, okay? So users can use Copilot, uh, preview of Copilot, other features powered by Azure Open AI. Uh, there is some learn more things that you can do around how this works. Uh, how you can, oh my gosh, look, you can use it in data science, data engineering, data factory, copilot for Power BI, oh, all this cool stuff, okay? Now, it is, uh, you know, if it's not available in your region, it's not going to work for you, okay? So, we're going to give this a shout, shout out. Now, this applies to everyone inside of your, your organization. It's not individuals, it's not users. You turn this on, you turn this on, okay? Same thing here. It is calling out like, um, hey, data is sent to op Azure Open AI can be processed outside your tenant's geographic region, compliance boundary, or national cloud instance. Uh, so be aware of this before you turn on because if, if these are an issue, don't turn these on. Okay. So once you get these on, you're going to head back into your, your workspaces and let's go take a look at my reporting workspace. Where did my reports go? Reports. Now, this is, you'll notice that this is a Power BI Premium per user workspace. So it's not going to work inside this workspace, but I'm going to show you what it looks like when it doesn't work. Okay, so if I'm in uh, a semantic model, and uh, here I've got my, um, uh, I know my auto eggs is not great, but okay, let's say I'm going to use my BS line here model to give this a shot. No, that one doesn't refresh great. Here we go, demo. We'll use this one, all right? So I'm in my data set. Now, uh, what I can do is I can go to create a report and say start from scratch. And there's going to be a little button right here. This is what we're talking about. Copilot. Oh, 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 oh. When I click on Copilot, it's going to pop up and we're going to see this message on the other side here. Save to a workspace that supports Copilot. Ah, uh, okay, so we knew this was going to happen, right? Like, it's 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 a premium per user. It's not supported there. Uh, where, where is the... Uh, didn't say. Oh, here it is, right? Uh, the workspace has to be running in, on an uh, F64 premium capacity for you to access uh, Copilot for the Power BI service, okay? So really easy. Now, I ha I luckily, I have uh, my data sets workspace, is a Power BI premium capacity content, right? So you can see that right here, right? So it's right here, so I could test this out. Um, and if you want to verify that it's in a premium capacity, all you do is go to workspace settings right here. And then I click on my premium capacity and it's going to show you what licensing type that the workspace is assigned to, right? So it could be pro, premium per user, premium capacity, fabric capacity trial, all right? now. One thing of note, if you choose a fabric capacity, like if I were to go over to this, I could choose my, my fabric capacity that I have out there. I don't know how big this is. I don't know if this is an F64 or not. So make sure in your naming conventions, you've done something to, ah, don't do that. 
you've done something to make sure that you you uh, you can tell if it what what size capacity is. Okay. Now I've got this all set up, so this is good. I'm just going to close this out. Now I want to find a data set that is uh, refreshing on me, so this one refreshes. So I'm sorry, semantic model. Sorry, Christian Wade. Uh, we're going to go into our data model again, and we're going to go to create report, and we're going to start from scratch. All right, this is going to come up. All right, so I'm in. I'm going to click on my copilot. Let's go. Here we go. All right, let's take a look. Now, ho, 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 copilot. Welcome to copilot in Power BI. Simplify your work with the help of AI and keep in mind, inaccuracies are possible. Be carefully review content created by AI before using it. This is so, so very important, right? Like AI is gonna try to interpret the data that it's consuming, the information that's out there. You have to look at it to see, does this make sense? Is this the right measures? That type of thing, that's very important, all right? Um, and note, your data is temporarily stored inside of the AI. In other words, it's got to cache that information in order to create that uh, large language model on top of it to come up with those insights. But we're going to give her a shot. So I'm going to say, get started. And uh, so it, I can either, I've got two options here. I've got, it says, let's create a report. I can either create a page that shows, or I can say, suggest content for this report. Uh, let's try the first one. Create a page that shows. Well, that's interesting. Well, uh, so that shows, I don't know, uh, reseller, reseller sales and profit margin by product over the last few years. That's like, oop, not few years, years. Oh, I typed that in. You can't see that there really well, but uh, create a page that shows the reseller sales and profit margin by product over the last few years. Now, we'll see if this works well or not. I'm gonna hit enter. And it's gonna start working on it. Now, in the demos we saw online, there's very much like, hey, this is prepped and ready for a show, so they've recorded it. It goes much quicker here. We're gonna actually see how long does it take to generate this actual image, or can it do it at all? I, I'm gonna say, I threw this uh, a, a straight up query. I don't have uh, a profit margin of uh, measure inside of my report, but holy cow, look at this. Let's collapse, collapse, collapse my filter. And what do I got here? Holy cow, I've got my reseller sales amount, total product cost. Well, that doesn't make sense, but okay. Um, sales unit per price. I've got it all broken out here. I mean, this is kind of good, right? Like if I look at my, uh, my product breakout, I've got this in here. I've got my different resellers that are out and it is around sales amount. So that's good. Broken out by the different types of products that we sell. I mean, like this is not bad. Look at this. I've even got like nice little categories in here so I can hone in on bikes. I could hone in on clothing. What is this? Oh, this is my year. Interesting. Oh, I wonder, no label there, but interesting how they put it together. I mean, uh, what do you guys think? Uh, I, I mean, like, I think it's relatively serviceable. I think this seems like a pretty good data set that I've got. And, and this is no like chump data set. I mean, if we look at, at, at this, it's, well, uh, it's got many different, uh, uh, you know, I've got many tables in here, multiple fact tables. I Straight up, this works. I mean, I, I think this is like an extension upon uh, like the, the that auto-generate report, but I, I think this is fairly good. Uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and I, I'm gonna, let's, 
let's try it again. Let's save this as a file. Save as first copilot report. There we go. I'm uh, yeah. I, I say win. I say this one wins. This is good. All right, let's go back though. Let's we had another option in there. I want to check that out. So let's go to create report, start from scratch. Let's go add in copilot and then okay, let's say suggest content for report. That was the next option. Let's suggest some content. I hit enter. So it's working on it. Oh, maybe I should have hit create okay. Oh, create a page that analyzes the tr here we go. Look at this. Okay, here's a selected outline for the report. Select any page topic to view details and start creating pages. Okay, internet sales performance, reseller sales comparison, product profitability analysis, employee and reseller relationship. Uh, all right, let's, um, uh, you know what? I've never done this before. Let's see what it does here, right? Let's create it. I kick it off. Uh, we see that it's working. You can see like it's thinking, it's thinking. Let's see what, what comes of it. Drum roll, please. Boom. I mean, now, <laughs> if you remember, it did take a, like a minute or two to like, come. oh. All right, well, let's take a look. What does this mean? Is this telling us something? This is our, and, and you know what? It's our employee and reseller relationships. So interesting to tab there. All right, let's take a look at this visualization. All right, so it shows middle name. That is uh, not useful, but uh, uh, we could probably change that though. So it's dim employee. And I wonder why I chose middle name versus something like, Oh, because I don't have like a full email address. All right, fair enough. Let's just do last name instead. So we'll eliminate that. Is that any good? Uh, I mean, it shows them broken out by sales. Okay, maybe. Uh, middle name again. So that's kind of not, uh, you know, it It seems like it liked the, the middle name. It, it like honed in on that. That's not particularly useful, but... I could swap in, easily swap in the, the appropriate, you know, value. And I mean, uh, I, I mean, reseller and then no discount. Interesting. I don't know. Uh, oh, and category name. All right. Sales territory, sales territory group. North America, NA, Europe, a little better. I mean, you know, it's not necessarily fabulous, but it's not necessarily bad either. But it looks like, and let's see if I could do this. So can I, so I did the employee rese uh, relate, reseller relationship, but that means I could probably go over to the product profitability analysis, click on create. Is it going to create another report page for me? It is working on it. Oops. Ah. Wrong button. It's working on it. That's cool. Oh, look at that. All right. So what do we got here? Product category profitability. So we've got our reseller sales amount due. Uh, let me hone in a little closer so you can see and join with me. Sales amount by uh, product cat subcategory. Okay, that's interesting. Broken out. What the heck is this one? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Product subcategory. Y axis is standard cost. That. Oh, uh, yeah, no, this is uh, some. Oh, that's junk. So this is no good. But uh, let's see, what is this one? Yeah, that's not good either. All right, well, 
so the first one I think was like a serviceable B. Uh, this one I'll give it like kind of like uh, uh, let's. Well, hang on, can I go back to my other page? This is like this ain't great. So maybe a C minus. This one is. I I I mean it it's definitely working. Uh, you know you. you know, Results may vary, I guess is the best way to say this, but let's try, you know, we've done three so far. We're, we're just going to do it one more. Let's see if this one can work. I'm creating it. It's cycling. Come on now. Oh, it's running. It's running. It's working. It's working. It's running. It's working. It's running. Boom, 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 boom. Huh. Interesting. Internet sales analysis by professional category broken out by similar things. What is this? By customer alternative key. Well, that's not very useful. Uh, what is this one? Uh, sales amount, full date, product category. That is, this is good. This is good. Meh. This is all right. All right. You know what? I think this is a pass. This is this looks pretty good. I mean, we are definitely like this is what day one. Just these these things are just out there. There's a whole bunch of like restrictions on performance and who can do all this stuff. But like, I just asked. I didn't even ask questions. Like, Copilot looked at my data, came up with some questions, and then gave me some visualized answers that were, you know, some were useful, some weren't. But you know. I think it's a pass, you know, um, and you know, honestly, I forgot about something. If you like this stuff, uh, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, you know, turn the alarm bell so you don't miss any of the content, all that good YouTuber stuff. I really got to get better at it because I, I forgot to say it at the start, but uh, I, I say co-pilot passes, leave a comment down below. What do you have to say about this? It, like, are we at an end state? No, we're not in an end state, but like day one, this revolutionary new tech is out. It, it like straight up worked. There was no cuts. There are no edits inside of this video. So I don't even know how long it is right now, but we're going to go straight with this out there. So apologies ahead of time uh, if this is super long, um, but I think it's worth seeing it. I think it's worth seeing it actually work and, and perform and function. If you have questions, leave them down below. You guys have a great day. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.